This morning, Aviation and Defense Universe is interviewing William Blair, the Vice President and Chief Executive of Lockheed Martin India. Sir, yes. what is the Lockheed Martin future as far as program in India is concerned in the backdrop of making India policy of the government of India? Well, first off, thank you for taking the time to, to meet with me and, and to, uh, in your interest uh, to engage. Uh, to talk about the future, I think we have to talk about the foundation that's built on uh, over 30 years of Lockheed Martin being here in India. Um, we've actually, uh, in particular over the last 10 years, uh, we've established a joint venture, uh, two joint ventures with Tata, one Lockheed Martin Aerostructures Limited, with what we know as uh, a Tata Lockheed Martin Structure, Aerostructures Limited, T-Lamal, T-L-M-A-L, and then also Tata Sikorsky. Uh, and so both joint ventures were, um, were born, if you will, uh, 10 years ago, so we'll be celebrating our 10-year anniversary. But what's important about that is that's created a foundation of making India. And, and we like to say we're making in India because through these two joint ventures, uh, the Tata Lockheed Martin Aerostructures are building the empanages for the C-130Js to the global requirement, uh, in addition, of course, to the C-130Js that have been delivered and operating with the Indian Air Force. On the Sikorsky side, uh, also 10 years old, uh, they've been producing the state-of-the-art uh, helicopter components um, and also extended to now making aircraft engine components too. So, uh, and, and by doing so, they've been engaging uh, all tiers of suppliers in India. So you have the, the joint ventures, but they're creating an ecosystem in India uh, from the you know, MSMEs down even to the startups that are feeding into this, this uh, uh, requirement uh, on both aerostructures and helicopter com components and aerostructures for helicopters. Um, we're happy to say that even though it started out as assembling imported components, now they're up to, um, on the uh, Sikorsky uh, side of the business for S-92 helicopters, um, they've been, uh, they, they've now, out of over 2,800 unique parts, 2,600 are made in the JV in-house in Hyderabad. Um, and so, uh, on, on the other side, uh, on the um, C-130, We've transitioned approximately uh, 2,000 parts uh, into that uh, joint venture so that we're both producing and assembling from within the JVs. And so, uh, so why is that important? Because Make in India is so important going forward. Um, that foundation allows us to very credibly make an offer both for the strategic partner programs on the fighter and the helicopter requirements that are just now coming up. But well, we can do that with a confidence on the level of quality, reliability, and support that we've been able to achieve uh, through these JVs and Hyderabad. Now, with that, now well, where's the future? Well, the future we think is uh, a future we've been all uh, aspiring to, I would say, for over a decade now as well, and that is the fighter requirement. And so on offer, we have the F-21, uh, and we can talk more about the F-21, but a very advanced aircraft, uh, with, with very specific capabilities uh, purposefully built to target to the Indian Air Force requirements. On the helicopter side, there's the Naval Utility Helicopter coming up potentially under the Strategic Partner Program designation as well. And, and again, uh, that can leverage both our expertise and foundation and, and product capability uh, from the U.S., but, but do that through uh, and partnering through the joint ventures we've established for now over a decade. Well, it's nice to hear that your future program matches well with the Make in India policy of the Government of India. Thank you, sir. The woman in aviation is one of the very popular activity of uh, Lockheed Martin in India. Could you please elaborate on this? Thank you. No, I appreciate the opportunity to. Um, women in aviation is a, uh, a global initiative to engage um, girls and, and young women early in, in from a STEM perspective, earlier uh, in, in their um, development of interests to, to come into the aviation uh, uh, career space. And of course aviation can be 
uh, commercial, it can be aerospace and defense. And so uh, Lockheed Martin is a company in aerospace and defense as a leader, a global leader in aerospace and defense. Um, we see this as a great opportunity from uh, uh, corporate and social responsibility to support STEM. It's a global initiative of ours. And we found a great opportunity to do that in collaboration with the Women in Aviation chapter in India. And we've uh, hosted and co-hosted and sponsored and supported uh, multiple Girls in Aviation Day events. Um, and, and, and these events are, are, are generally where you bring uh, a group of school children, usually uh, you know, 8th grade through ninth grade, uh, so they're still in the formative phase of their career aspirations and where they might go to university or, or maybe they have other aspirations, but to help them know that you know, there are opportunities um, through science, technology, engineering, and math skills to, uh, to find those opportunities um, uh, after they graduate, whether it's at a high school level or, or even going into the college level. And the people they bring together, it's fascinating. They, you know, um, uh, women pilots, uh, uh, a woman who is a trainer, a pilot trainer uh, down in Indoor, we hosted uh, over 40 over 40 children coming in, and they are just fascinated to hear about the opportunities that span across the whole commercial sector. And and you know I think it's uh, it's important because uh, it, it, it's both from an awareness perspective and an understanding that there truly are opportunities because they can see specific examples, find mentors that are going to help them uh, grow in their future career aspirations. Well, that's great. I think you are fulfilling one of the social responsibilities. Yeah, and if I could add one thing that um, kind of a corollary to that is uh, something that we're doing uh, down in Hyderabad. So I talked earlier about our joint ventures that we have there. Uh, and through those joint ventures, we have a program. It's a, a, a women in apprenticeship program. And so we're, we're connecting uh, to the villages, and some more remote villages outside of Hyderabad. And, and affording opportunities uh, to, to women that would like to um, uh, come into the uh, aerospace and defense workforce, find those opportunities as apprenticeships and give them the support that they need, as well as mentoring, training, and, and, a, and a job uh, to find those opportunities through and working through our joint ventures. And, and we call that, you know, it fits very well with the skills in India initiative that the government is leading and, and we're very pleased to be a part of that. So think of it in two dimensions. One, encourage women to at earlier in their um, uh, high school ages to, to think about uh, aerospace and defense or engineering as a career and then they'll also find those opportunities where they can uh, 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 find that interest and apply those skills. Really, indeed, uh, human service. Yes, thank you. All right, we're pleased to be a part of it. It's a great initiative. Yes. Bill, yes. uh, please tell us more about uh, the Lockheed Martin offer uh, about uh, the F-21 for the Indian Air Force 114 program. Oh, thanks. No, what, you know, we're excited about the opportunity where the uh, Indian Air Force requirement of 114 fighters is coming up, we think, uh, uh, as we hear, and, and, and we've been... Um, as you would have heard at Aero India last year, we were offering, uh, anticipating this requirement and offering the F-21 uh, for that requirement. Um, you know, I think when we think about the fighter program of that scale and that importance, we know it's really important for us uh, because this is a long-term and strategic defense partnership that, that you would undertake for such an aircraft that it's really important for it to be part of a foundation and build on the partnerships that we have with our joint ventures here. Uh, because this would, we expect would be a Make in India program and, and very much require a, a lot of the content to be uh, uh, produced and, and assembled under partnership uh, in India uh, and really for India, from India, from within India. Um, we feel it's the best solution to meet the Indian Air Force's requirements uh, in terms of capability needs while also delivering on the Make in India promise that, that I mentioned earlier. But it also accelerates the U.S. and India cooperation. So we're fortunate, I think today, much more so than say 10 years ago, with all the foundational agreements in place to make that possible for us to deliver absolutely the best state-of-the-art capability 
that the Indian Air Force requires and do that with a partner under the Industrial Security Annex that was recently signed that will allow us to work together with Indian partners in a way that we never could before to, to go much further in terms of how we collaborate on, on very advanced uh, strategic platforms, strategic platforms such as the F-21. Um, now the F-21, it, it really gives us an unmatched opportunity also to work with not just the strategic partner but companies of all sizes. So we've, we've already, through our earlier joint venture participation over the last decade, really created an Indian ecosystem around our joint ventures of uh, not just the large but the MSMEs and even startups are part of that ecosystem. They're becoming part of our global supply chain and they're very much positioned to be part of that Make in India offer that we could provide on the F-21. Um, lastly, I would say that the F-21 delivers um, the most advanced, scalable, single-engine, multi-role fighter at the most optimal life cycle cost, which is so important, cost of operations and reliable operations for an Air Force, uh, for the Indian Air Force, and offers the longest service life at 12,000 flight hours. Simply put, the F-21 goes goes further, faster, and stays in service longer than the competition. So Bill, I understand that F-21 is not an old wine, in a new bottle. No, you're right, sir. Uh, actually, um, the F-21 uh, does build on a very large and successful uh, uh, fighter um, uh, family, if you will, and, and history of capability. Um, but what's important to understand about the, the F-21 is that as a fighter, although the aircraft structure might look familiar with some of uh, its predecessors, uh, the, the, difference becomes, the differences in the value become very clear when you're looking at the unique capabilities in the F-21. I would say firstly, the uh, APG-83 actively uh, electronically scanned array, IESA radar as it's known, um, is incredibly effective at detecting threats at ranges nearly double that of the previous mechanically scanned array radars. Um, that gives capability to the pilots to um, both track and attack more tar targets than with much greater precision. Um, secondly, uh, we've developed also uniquely for India uh, and enhance survivability against ground and air threats that are detected. Uh, we have a long-range uh, infrared search and track, IRST as it's known, enabling pilots to detect threats without getting themselves detected, and that makes them much more effective. Now ultimately, as a, as a fighter and as a pilot, you're, you're trying to deliver uh, uh, um, uh, on a mission which oftentimes puts uh, missiles on target whether it's air to air or air to ground. And, and so uh, with the F-21, very uniquely, it has a triple missile, triple missile launcher uh, adapter. So it allows F-21 to carry 40% more air to air weapons. Uh, and a dorsal fairing also is on the structure that you can see that provides it much greater increased growth cap capacity and, and also allows us to with some of these changes, significant changes as I've summarized, to indigenize uh, some of these improvements to, to really come up with the most advanced uh, single engine fighter uh, that we could have on offer. Very well explained, sir. Okay, thank you. What are Lockheed Martin views and plans for the local suppliers from the Indian market? No, thank you, sir. I appreciate the question. Um, we, we see tremendous strength and opportunity in engaging in India's defense industry and in the, the defense uh, uh, industrial base. Uh, and and I, I've seen the growth in that. Uh, we've been engaging in large uh, companies, uh, MSMEs, and in fact under the India Innovation Growth Program, IIGP as it's affectionately known, we've also engaged startups, uh, incubated startups that are now becoming part of our global supply chain through that initiative. Now when we, we've, we've looked at and engaged over 200 suppliers, we've analyzed over 400, we know there's a broad and deep base for uh, meeting the aerospace and defense requirements, not just for India, but becoming part of our global supply chain and delivering to meet the requirements around the world. Um, you know, as part of this program, 
uh, and part of this engagement, um, I would like to call out uh, one of the initiatives that the MOD has undertaken uh, that we think is tremendous and we're happy to be in support of that. It's called IDEX, uh, and in 2019, 2018 they launched that, um, and we partnered with them through the Indian Innovation and Growth Program. IIGP is a partnership between uh, Defense and Science and Technology uh, Department, uh, Tata Trusts, and Lockheed Martin, and through that we're able to incubate startups, university collaboration, and so, you know, think about suppliers as we call them. We really think about them as partners from, like I said, from the largest all the way down to the smaller companies to even startups that are going to incubate and be the, the really the next generation of, of aerospace and defense companies uh, based here in India. What do you think Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, tremendous. Thank you. Ben. You know, the Defense Expo is around the corner. Yes. So, what is the Defense Expo 2020 agenda of Lockheed Martin? Well, we're very excited. We're very excited to be part of uh, Def Expo 2020. Um, we always look forward to Def Expo. I, I think I've been coming to Def Expo now for say, 13, 14 years, roughly, and 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 the fact that it's in luck now this time is is uh, is unique and a great opportunity. We're, we, we always look forward to it because it's an opportunity because it brings the, brings the best from across the aviation, aerospace, and defense uh, companies. Uh, we, we're able to engage across all domains, whether it's land, sea, air, uh, space, and, and cyber. And um, it gives us an opportunity to meet with companies from within India, uh, from the large MSMEs all the way down to the startups. And so uh, it's a tr tremendous engagement opportunity. Of course, the leadership from the Ministry of Defense and the Defense Services uh, are all there. and it, it really affords an opportunity for us to bring our leadership in from the U.S. and, and participate in those engagements that we much, you know, very much value here because, you know, we're, we're presenting, uh, you know, our best capabilities, the F-21, you can see that in our, our stall uh, model, uh, the MH-60 Romeo that, that, that the Indian Navy uh, is considering under a, a FMS deal for the uh, their requirement for ASW, uh, anti-submarine warfare, um, very important and urgent need. And then also you'll see our Javelin. You can fire an anti-tank guided missile using our Javelin trainer. Um, you'll see uh, in one of our partner spaces an S-92 cabin. The S-92 is a premier uh, 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 both civil and international and utility helicopter and actually a helicopter uh, that meets the VIP requirements, the S-92, and so uh, I think you can see the full range of what we have on offer, but, but please, you know, we appreciate people coming to join us and, and have those discussions that we think will lead to both opportunities to work together as well as deliver our best capabilities to meet the mission requirements of, of, of the warfighters in India. Wonderful. Okay. I think we're going to have a grand uh, reunion at Lucknow in the Defense Act 2020. Great. Well, thank you. So I really appreciate it. Thank Same. you. Thank it you. was a pleasure interacting no, with you. My pleasure. Thank you for your time. Yeah.